Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we can be together. We thank you for your word. It's alive. It is full of power. And it is for us. And I thank you that you have given it to us. Lord, I ask you, please anoint me one more time. Please let the mantle of teacher come and rest on me. Enable me, Lord, to be accurate and clear and plain with what it is that you've put on my heart for tonight. Lord, we want, we know, we know that our minds matter to you. We know that you have a plan for us to have wholeness in our minds, peace of mind, to got peace to guard our minds and our hearts through Christ Jesus. And Lord, we just don't want to miss it. We do not want to miss it. And we want to know what it is that we need to do to get to what it is that you have for us. And we're declaring tonight, Lord, we're willing to fight. We are willing to fight the good fight. We are willing to fight. We are declaring tonight we will no longer be passive in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we open ourselves up to all that you have for us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen? Can you say amen? Amen and amen. All right. Zooming through review. All right. Uh, we, we are over and over again being reminded that Romans 12, 1 and 2 says that we are to present ourselves to God as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto him. Word says it's our act of worship, that it's our reasonable service. Romans 12, 2 goes on to say, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. How many of you think God's will is a good thing to have, to know, to test, and approve? We will. We're designed to be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The reason that we do this teaching, Your Mind Matters, as part of the Help for Hurting Women ministry, the ministry to those who are hurting, and so many men watch as well, is because when we are hurting, when there are things coming against us that hurt us, maybe historically, maybe from as long as we can remember, maybe there are issues in our lives right now, and I promise you, other things are going to come. Other things are going to happen. The first place that the enemy is going to attack us when we are hurting is in our minds. That's where the whole thing's going to begin. So that's why this is so important. Um, it is secondarily important after the walls of our heart teaching because we have to be able to honestly evaluate what continues to happen in our lives and know how to go about continuing to win the war and the battles that are in our mind that is part of that war. Can you say amen? Amen. So one of those things that we addressed in these past many lessons, and this is actually lesson 15, is that we, we actually have to start fighting back. We can't just let, we just can't let ourselves continue to be beat up, right? We have to start fighting back. And you, you heard Lynette relate to it. You have to stop listening to the wrong voices, okay, that are out there. Stop listening to the committee in your head. Stop listening to that. Learn to recognize the voice of Jesus, amen, through his word, yes, but for you individually as well, and learn to talk to yourself. Amen? But talk to yourself correctly. And we're going to talk about that again tonight. There is power in the spoken word as we are speaking over ourselves. And so we continued on with the importance of making a battle plan. No one's going to, no army worth its salt who intends to win is going to go into any war any battle without a plan because they know if they go in without a plan they're defeated from the beginning right they're defeated from the beginning so we must make a battle plan we must all right so we have second corinthians 10 3 through 5 second corinthians 10 3 through 5 i had you turn there 
From the New International Version, it reads, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. Lynette referred to this. What does the world do? They fight each other, right? They fight each other. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they, referring to our weapons, have, what are the next words? Divine power to do what? Demolish strongholds. Demolish. These are strong words. Divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension, everything pretending, we talked about this, to be truth, that is not truth, right? Maybe facts, maybe, you know, it's fact that people say things to you, it's fact that people do things to you, it's fact that situations are what they are, it's fact. But we have to filter that through what's the truth? What does the word say, right? about me regarding situations. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive. We take captive aggressively. What? Every thought. Does it really say every thought? Oh, come on. It can't say every thought. Every thought to make it obedient to Christ obedient to his spirit, obedient to his word, obedient to his will. All right, so here we have it from this passage of scripture. Number one, we choose our weapons. We have divine weapons, and we spent an entire class talking about the weapons of our warfare. Amen? Head to toe, prayer, spirit, everything. Choosing our weapons. Secondly, was really, um, if you want to put it this way, using our weapons, making sure they're in good working order and using them as God has created us to use them. Number three was that we take prisoners of war. We take thoughts captive. We don't let them just run wild. We take them captive. We bring them down to the obedience of Christ. Number four, we recognize our major weaknesses. Any army needs to do this. They need to recognize the the weak areas, what needs to be strengthened. And I know that our major weakness as the body of Christ, as the church, (laughs) as, as those even in this room, our major weakness is just being passive just being passive, just roll with it. I mean, you're, you're pounded with the news, right? You're pounded with stuff that is so disheartening, and we absolutely cannot be passive. And then the last class, we talked about very practically, very specifically, the characteristics of a passive mind. And I praise God that you all loved it. I praise God you loved it, because that means you're, you're embracing it, you're engaging it. So now we come to go to war. Amen? Amen? Go to war. And the title of tonight is actually Deployed for Battle. D- deployed, D-E-P-L-O-Y-E-D, Deployed for Battle. You know, in recent years, we've heard a lot more about deployment because so many of our wonderful armed services men and women have been deployed to go into battle wherever that might be the national guard that's going to be within the united states of america uh, other outside of that in all branches of service that's going to be deployed to all kinds of foreign fronts right deployed Now, it's interesting to me because um, Pastor Russ watches sitcoms a lot, (laughs) evidently. Right, evidently he watches sitcoms a lot. Well, I I don't watch sitcoms, I don't. And some of the things I watch might not be so great for you to watch, okay? But honestly, my spiritual daughter, Kelly, who's behind the camera, 
engaged me in SEAL Team some years ago. Have any of you watched SEAL Team? Let me see your hands. Okay. SEAL Team is about the Navy SEALs, the most well-trained of all <laughs> branches of services. I mean, SEALs are just stunning. I mean, they are stunning in their training. Stunning. And the situations that they, they are sent into, I mean, just watching it every time, I'm like, ah! <laughs> but I know they're trained. I know they're trained. I know they're trained for what they're sent into. And it is amazing to me that every time that they are being deployed for a situation that is absolutely critical, critical to the United States of America and often to the world, the first thing they know they have to have is a plan. And they brainstorm it. They brainstorm it. And these are, these are not only phenomenally physically trained SEALs, but their minds are sharp and ready for battle. And they, they think it out. They make a plan. This is after, now listen to what I'm saying. After all their training, after they have chosen their weapons, after they know how to use their weapons, right? After they have analyzed all of their weaknesses on the team, how do they go about shoring that up? How do they correct it? And then they're ready and they're deployed. They're deployed. This is what you're going to do. That's the deployment. But the next thing they do, which is part of the deployment, they make a specific plan for the assignment. They make a specific plan for the specific assignment. Are you listening to me? For the specific assignment. And don't for one moment think that fear is not a factor. Because fear is a factor. You know fear is coming against them because they're going into what appears to be impossible odds. Impossible odds. Are you with me? You with me? All right. So part of de being deployed for battle, and that's the title tonight, is that we must, before we're actually engaged, I mean, deeply in spiritual warfare regarding what's going on in our minds, we, part of the deployment is exercising our power and our authority to resist the enemy's attacks. Because right away, when we recognize something's coming against our minds and it's serious, and we've got to fight this fight, right away the enemy is going to come to try to defeat us in our minds. Right away. And we have to be re ready to recognize the authority that we have been given. Amen? So I want us to look again at 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, and I want us all to read it together, but this time I want us to make it personal because this is how we go about this. Now let me just give you an example of the first line. For though I live in the world, I do not wage war as the world does. Are you with me? This is how we take a scripture and we make it personal. So I want you to read this out loud with me. For though I live in the world, I do not wage war as the world does. The weapons I fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, my weapons Say that again. My weapons have divine power to demolish strongholds. I demolish arguments and 
every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And I take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Give yourselves a hand. Amen? Amen. That is our declaration. We have to be prepared to make this declaration. And so many of you are familiar with 2 Timothy 1.7. <laughs> God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, right? Okay, so in the NIV, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, all right? We haven't been given a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and really a self-disciplined mind. So repeat this after me. We're going to make it personal. I thank God that he did not give me a spirit of timidity, a spirit of fear, but he did give me a spirit of power and love, which never fails, and a self-disciplined mind. Can you say amen? Give yourselves a hand. Amen. I'm having you do this intentionally because there comes a time when we have to be very intentional about understanding, okay, we're deployed. We're deployed for battle. And we have to exercise our power and our authority to resist the enemy because he is going to try to come against us with fear. He's going to try to come against us with all kinds of things to hold us back from fighting this fight the way it needs to be fought. Are you with me? All right. Say no. Just say no to those things in the name of Jesus. Amen? No. No, I'm not going there. I mean, there's a reason why in the word of God over 600 times it says, do not fear. The Lord knew this was going to be a problem. He knew the enemy would come at us, at us this way. We have to be exercise our authority. No, in the name of Jesus, I'm deployed. I'm going into this battle. And no, I will not yield to fear. I will not. I cast down it, it, this is what it sounds like. I cast down these imaginations. I cast down these thoughts. This negative, evil, old thoughts. Those carnal thoughts that I used to think. You know, when we're presenting ourselves as living sacrifices, I say all the time, don't leave your brain out. Amen? Amen. I cast down these imaginations. I take these thoughts into captivity. I love Titus 2, 11, and 12. I love this passage of scripture. Titus 2, 11, and 12. It says this, For the grace of God has appeared, my NIV older version says, has appeared to all men. The grace of God has appeared to all men. Newer versions say, the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Well, just think about it. The Lord has come. The Lord has offered salvation to all people, right? And how are we saved? Ephesians 2.8, we're saved by grace. Amen? We're saved by grace through faith. Ephesians 2.8. This has been offered to all men, to all men. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Listen to verse 12. It teaches us. It. It what? What's the subject there? The grace of God. Grace is a teacher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great, and this is present tense. Grace teaches us. This is continually going on in us, if we will let it. It teaches us to do what? To say no. No to ungodliness and worldly passions. And to live self-controlled, 
upright and godly lives in this present age. I think of the SEAL team. They've, I mean, they have to be ready. They have to be living ready, okay? Now, I'm not saying to you spiritually they're ready. I'm talking about physically, right? We have a responsibility to spiritually be ready all the time. I said last time, no vacations. <laughs> no vacations. We cannot take a vacation from this because if we do, we're going to get pounded. We're going to get killed. All right, so now I'm going to read Titus 2, 11 and 12, and we're going to take it personally. Amen? So just repeat after me. I thank you, God, for your grace that brings salvation and that it has appeared to me. It teaches me to say no. No to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live a self-controlled, upright, godly life in this present age. Can you say amen? Give yourselves another hand. Amen. Amen. And amen. You see, part of what we have to do in this day and age, we have to examine what are we looking at on Facebook? Where is it taking us? What hole is it taking us into? I mean, I am telling you, you can begin on Facebook and then suddenly you realize one hour has passed. And what have you accomplished? And what have you really read that matters? Are you with me? Now, I'm not saying there cannot be good things. I mean, we have a Facebook page for the ministry. We have a Facebook page. It can be really good things, but it can be really bad things. And you have to be able to get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Get it out. It's the same with text. It's the same with text. I mean, phone calls... I used to say to people who said, I'm just being, you know, this person's doing this on a phone call and this on a phone call and this on a phone call. And it was a conversation. And I would say to them, do you actually realize it takes two people to have a phone conversation? <laughs> it takes two, okay? You can take authority here. You can just end this. You don't have to go on with this. Are you with me? You understand what I'm saying? Okay. It's the same with text. Listen, there is no rule that says if someone texts you, you have to text them back. There is no rule that says that, right? And man, there are times when people can text things. I heard, it, I heard about something that happened to someone today. It was short. It was curt. It was hurtful. It was hard. And then the mind starts going. You know, then the mind starts going. Okay, did I cause this? What's happening? You know, how has this happened? Look, re-examining everything I've ever said to this person. Are you with me? You with me? Okay. Now, examining ourselves is a good thing. But getting carried away because of a short, curt text that is hurtful, we got to bring that stuff into captivity right? We can't, we can't be passive and just let our minds go. It's the same with email. And do you know that it is actually a reality that you can block numbers? Yeah. <laughs> you can even block emails, right? Are you with me? You understand what I'm saying? Now, all of this is tempered by the grace of God and the love of God. I don't want you not reaching out to people who are in need. Of course, we reach out to people who are in need. Of course, we reach out to people who need the Lord, right? But, we, you know, I, we have to understand we're called to be peacemakers as much as it is up to us. We can't be peacekeepers, because there are some people who won't allow peace. 
You think you got the rules right, and just when you think you got it right, they change them. Right? And you can literally start to, in your mind, drive yourself crazy. Am I making sense to you? Am I? Okay. Praise God. All right. So, exercise our power and authority to resist those attacks that are coming. This is all part of we're deployed now. All right? We need to continue renewing our minds by filling our minds and our hearts with the word of God. With the word of God. Put it in, put it in, put it in, put it in. We are promised. The word has power all on its own. And if we will just keep putting it in, our minds are being renewed, our hearts are being renewed, and the roots of that are going deep inside. Amen. All right. So I'm being deployed. How do I go to war? How do I do this? Um, there was a movie about this. You can make yourself a war room. Okay. You can make yourself a war room. All right. You can write down the scriptures that are needful for you. You can put them in a place where you can go in and pray, all right? Doesn't always work to do that in somebody else's wall unless they've asked for it, okay? But it might, right? But you understand what I'm saying, all right? So write this down. The Word of God, you need to read it, meditate on it, listen to what it is saying to you, and you need to study. You need to study. You need to study. There is so much available now that is so good. When I started out doing this, you know, over 30 years ago, there were cassette tapes. End of story. That's it, okay? And so, I mean, that's it, cassette tapes, end of story, if you really wanted to study. Now there are CDs, DVDs, online classes, um, wonderful books, wonderful churches that teach the word of God, wonderful classes that teach the word of God. But you have got, this is all part of deployment. It's all part of deployment. You have to be active in this, active reading the word, meditating on the word, listening, study. You know what? I checked on the YouVersion app today because I was interested. And I think I mentioned this during praise report. On the YouVersion app right now, there are 67 English translations of the Bible available. 67. I think you can find one you like. Out of 67, I think you can find one you like. I mean, just think about it. There's the King James, the New King James, the New American Standard, the NIV, the Amplified, the Amplified Classic, the Living Bible, the New Living Translation, the Message, the Bashan Translation, right? To name only a few. Amen? Find something that you, that you understand. Find something that you can enjoy reading. And the other thing I want to say to you is you don't have to read five chapters in a day. You don't. I mean, I do a reading plan where I'm doing, you know, a few chapters a day. I didn't start out that way. I mean, I started out with a much smaller passage of Scripture but I just really dug into it and thought about it and prayed about it. This is important that we do this. There are fabulous study Bibles that are available, and they're not expensive, honestly. They're available at our Christ-centered life Bible store, which is fabulous. Uh, Danny Vera, uh, big push for Danny Vera at Christ-centered life store. <laughs> Um, he, he's actually on our church council. Danny Vera is part of our church. What a wonderful man of God, and what a wonderful store. You walk in there, you look left. I mean, there are Bibles. <laughs> you look right, you look 
left, you look up, you look down, Bibles, right? And some of those are wonderful study Bibles, wonderful study Bibles. Um, how many of you actually know what a concordance is? Yeah, you know what a concordance is? It's awesome. I mean, you can find, and Bible dictionaries, concordance, you can find out where specific words are, what it is that they mean, because it is rich. It is rich. Part of being deployed for battle, being prepared to go to war, you need to know how to pray. You really need to know how to pray. And if you don't know how to pray, We've got little books back there on the book table, prayers that avail much, prayers that avail much. I think the ones we have are prayers that avail much for women, okay? I think they're $5, but tonight it's a deal because if you don't have one and they're back there, I'm giving it to you, okay? If you don't have one because you must know how to pray. We have to be able to pray effectively. Amen. So are you with me? Right? So first, it's all about the word. It's all about reading and meditating and studying and listening to the word. Number two, and we're talking now, how do we go to war? Number two is you've got to apply the word to your personal life, your personal life. Pastor Russ has been doing a series on the book of James. He said he has found it quite convicting because there, it's addressing areas that he recognizes are not his strengths. Well, we need to be willing to let that word speak to our lives as well. Amen? James 1, through 25. Now we're talking here, applying the word of God to our personal lives. James 1, through 25. Do not merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Amen? Don't just listen. Do it. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face, her face, in a mirror, and after looking at herself, goes away and immediately forgets what she looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law, this is into the word of God, that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it. They'll be blessed in what they do. Can you say amen? That sounds like a pretty awesome plan right there. A pretty awesome plan. Applying the word of God. Now, let me just give you an example. Over and over again, in the word of God, Lord's Prayer, Jesus speaking to us, all through the New Testament, we are told the absolute importance that it is absolutely imperative that we forgive right? That we forgive. Lord's Prayer, Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talked about it, that we forgive. When we are hurting and we're remembering who's done it and how they did it and all of the details of it, we don't want to forgive. We don't want to forgive. We, we want to be conformed to the way the world does this. We want to do that. We want to fight this the way the world fights it, right? We can't, we cannot do it. We cannot do it. We forgive because the cross makes it right. Amen? Makes it just. Amen? I'm forgiven because of the cross. I'm forgiven. I don't forgive people because I'm excusing what they did. I forgive them because of Jesus Christ within me. And I understand that if I don't forgive, I'm sunk. I mean, it's, it's got my mind, right? Um, the, you know, the, the book that says it's like, it's like a hook in your jaw, just pulling you along, unforgiveness. So we can't just listen to the word that says forgive. 
we have to actually do it. <laughs> Kelly was reminding me this week because there was an issue she was dealing with, and she said, do I really have to do this 70 times seven today and every day? Yeah, today and every day, yes. Why? Because the word says so. The word says so. This is a choice. Next thing we're going to go to, it's an act of our will. But this is a choice. It's the same with tithing. Listen, tithing is giving back to God what is already his, right? God blesses us. He gives us, ten, giving the tithe 10%. Yes, 10% is giving to God what is his. It's giving to God what is his. Malachi is 100% completely clear. If we're not doing it, we're robbing God, right? We're robbing God, and we will reap the consequences of that. We will. Okay, God wants us to forgive. God wants us to tithe. Why? So that we're blessed. So that we're blessed, right? As we forgive, our hearts are just letting it go, right? Our hearts are letting it go. We may have to do it over and over again, but suddenly the time comes when it's like, you know what? This is not a struggle anymore. This is done. It's done because I've done it the Lord's way. Same with tithing. Why tithe? Because the word says he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessing. I mean, it is completely stunning that 90% goes farther than 100% when we tithe. Amen? We can't just listen to the word. This is all part of deployment. This is all part of being ready for what it is that God has called us to do. So, number one, read, meditate, listen, study. Number two, apply the word of God to your personal life. Number three, exercise control over your will. Exercise the control. Exercise. You have the authority. You have the power to exercise the control. Listen to what this says again in James 1, through 25. Don't just listen and deceive yourself. Do what it says. And he wanted to listens to the word, but doesn't do it. It's like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And then after looking at the face in the mirror, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like, what she looks like. I mean, just think about that. Do you understand that in order to see your reflection in the mirror, it takes light? It takes light right? If we're functioning in darkness, no, we're not going to see our reflection, okay? So we're going to go away and forget for sure, right? It takes, it takes light. Proverbs 4.18 says this, Proverbs 4.18, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun. Think about it. It's like the morning sun. It's coming up. It's getting ever brighter in our lives. Amen? Shining ever brighter till the full light of day. Psalm 105, 119 Verse 105, Psalm 119, verse 105. You all know this passage of scripture. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Amen? The path of righteousness. His word. Say it again. It's his word. It's his word. It's his word. The team can say this with me. <laughs> The word will work if, if you will work the word. The word will work if you will work the word. Amen? And number four is act on the word. Act on it. Be a hearer 
and a doer. Act on the word. James 1, through 25 from the message puts it this way. Listen, don't fool yourself into thinking that you're a listener when you're anything but letting the word go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in the mirror, walk away, and two minutes later, they have no idea who they are or what they look like. Now listen to 25. But whoever catches a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God, the free life, even out of the corner of his eye, and sticks with it, is no distracted scatterbrain. (laughs) But a man or a woman of action, not just hearing, but acting on it. Amen? That person, that one who even begins to glimpse the revealed counsel of God from the word of God, that person will find delight and affirmation in the action. The more action you take, the more delight you find in it, and the more you are affirmed. You are affirmed by the Lord. You are affirmed by friends around you who support you and see the decisions that you're making. I wrote in my notes after this passage of scripture, we find joy in the deployment. Joy in the deployment for battle. Now, some of you in this room, some of you even listening to me right now, may feel that you have missed this by a long shot. And I'm telling you, when I came back to God, that's exactly how I felt. I had missed this by a long shot. But I want to read to you a poem, and I don't even know the author. It's called, I Can Begin Again. I Can Begin Again. So I don't care where you are right now. You can begin again. The enemy may be trying to shoot you down in your deployment right this moment, saying it's too late. You're already sunk. You've already gone too far, done too much, thought too much wrong, too much has happened. I can begin again. Alone again. In a crowded room. I'm cornered by the questions in my mind. It's so hard to understand how the life that I had planned stole my joy and left me far behind. Though all I had is lost, it seems, in the shadow of a dream that used to be, I can look beyond the skies, deep into the Father's eyes, and see that there is hope for one like me. I can begin again with the passion of a child. My heart has caught a vision of a life that's still worthwhile. I can reach out again far beyond what I have done. Like a dreamer who's awakened to a life that's yet to come. For new beginnings are not just for the young. I face the dawn of each brand new day, free from all the doubt that plagued my past, for I found in trusting him that every day life starts again as I look toward the things of life that truly last. Amen. If you would just bow your heads. Heavenly Father, I am so thankful for the plan that you have for us. That you don't just leave us floundering with the things of this world that come against us. That come to bombard our minds and come to bombard our lives. And Lord, it's absolutely true. True in my life 
true in those listening, true in this room, that we can look at our lives and see time and again where we absolutely blew it. We were not prepared for the battle. We weren't. And the harvest wasn't good. The results were not good. But those days are gone. And those things that we did wrong there, we are asking you to forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for the ways that we failed, for the ways we did not know you, the ways we did not know your word, the decision that, decisions that we made that were destructive. We ask your forgiveness for those things, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that no matter where we are at this particular moment, right now, this moment, no matter what it is that we are facing, we can do this your way. And if we need to begin again, this is the moment right now because your grace is sufficient and it teaches us to say no to the way we've been doing it and yes to the way that you would have us do it and we find it in your word and through your spirit. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you. And now with no one looking around, I've prayed this prayer. We've made this declaration. And with the Spirit of God, we're empowered to do this. We can begin again. We can keep right on, right where we are, with the empowerment that we have from his Spirit and through his word and the weapons that were given. But none of this is going to work if we do not have Jesus Christ in our hearts, if the Spirit of God is not ruling and reigning in us. I don't know everyone in this room tonight, and I surely don't know all of you listening. I don't. And if this is a night when you need to make a decision to invite Jesus Christ into your heart, this is your night. It's exactly why you're listening, exactly why you're here. Or maybe like me, you did this, but along the way, you lost your way. And you know you need step one of deployment is coming to him so that you go forward with you and him and him and you. If either one of those is you, would you just raise your hand in this room so I can pray for you? You need to accept Jesus. I see your hand to my left. Praise God. Praise God. Or if you need to recommit your life, praise God. I'm just going to ask you to stand. I'm just gonna, you, you who raised your hand, I just want to ask you to stand. Linda's going to stand right with you. And all of us are standing with you. Everyone in this room, everyone listening, would you just repeat after me? Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight, and I know I need a Savior. I need you, Jesus, in my heart as my Savior. I believe you're the Son of God, that you lived a sinless life here. You died for my sins, but it didn't end there. Now you're alive. And you live for me. Please forgive me, Lord. Wash me clean right now. And I declare, I will either begin again right now, or I will continue to press on right now. Because you are my Savior. You are mine, and I am yours. And you are Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say amen, amen, and amen? <clears throat> Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this time. Thank you for your word. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. Lord, we want to be <laughs> spiritual seals. We just want to be spiritual seals. We want to be absolutely expecting deployment expecting deployment and absolutely fully prepared knowing knowing it's time lord it's time it's time for us to be deployed for battle because next time this is it we're waging war that's it we're going into it we are going to war and we are going to win 
because you've already won in Jesus' name. So God, take us from this place with huge angels on guard round about us. I ask you, God, give us sweet sleep in the name of Jesus. It's the word. It's the word. It's the word. And I thank you, Lord. <coughs> the word will work if what? We will work the word. Can you say amen and give him praise? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.